Hello there investors, my name is Natalia Willett Grace and I'm a real estate business planning and estate planning attorney here in the state of Florida and today I want to talk to you about something that is vitally important because um, there seem to be misunderstandings in the community about what it means to use a self-directed IRA and how you can use it and what you can't use it for uh, because you'll face stiff penalties from the internal revenue. Okay, that's the Department of Treasury, IRC, whatever you want to call it, the tax people. So here's the thing. Uh, while you can create a self-directed IRA in order to use it for the purpose of real estate investments, you cannot engage in what are called self-dealing transactions. And I'm going to talk about three self-dealing transactions in which I see the biggest mistakes being made. Okay. So number one, self-dealing transaction, which is going to get you penalized by the tax court involves you having and already owning a piece of real estate and then transferring it over to a self-directed IRA. You can't do that. You're a covered person under the Internal Revenue Code. It is a prohibited self-dealing transaction. You cannot sell or exchange things with your IRA if you're a covered person. Or if it's property that's coming from your spouse, your children, your grandparents, your great-grandparents, your grandchildren. So think of it that way, right? Going upward in your line of ancestry and downward in your line of ancestry. Okay, <clears throat> let's talk about the second type of cover transaction, which is prohibited, okay? So this one involves lending and doing loans from your IRA. Your self-directed IRA cannot make loans or loan type of investment transactions to anybody that's a covered person. It can't lend to you, it can't lend to your spouses, uh, grandparents, great-grandparents, children, grandchildren, same thing, siblings as well, okay? So you cannot have those transactions take place. You cannot use it for purposes of investing in that way. And then the transaction number three, that I see that gets people in trouble that you should really understand and know about before you go and use this for your self-directed IRA. If you have a self-directed IRA and you create um, an LLC, let's say an LLC that's fully owned by your self-directed IRA, that LLC, <clears throat> um, if you create it from the very beginning, it's owned by your self-directed IRA, the LLC at that moment, that second in time is not considered a covered entity, a prohibited person or entity uh, under the tax code. However, after that, after that, let's say you're using this LLC because you wanna run a business, great. But if you decide to pay yourself from that business, the LLC is now considered a covered person and it'll be engaging in self-dealing um, by paying you a salary. So again, if you have an LLC or a corporation and the stock is fully owned by your self-directed IRA and this corporation is paying you a salary, you are engaging in self-dealing and can be in serious trouble with the tax court and subject to many, many penalties. So that is my big educational thing for you today. For more information like this, remember to subscribe to our channel. And if you have questions about how to do investments properly through self-directed IRAs, contact our office at 813-480-2106 or you can email me at natalia at lcolawfl.com.